it's, it's, it sounds like you going through a thing over there, bro. Man, <laughs> man, it's day two of trailer searches. These motherfuckers can't never get it together. Yeah, we gotta snap that back. Had something in the background that was that was not conducive to this interview right here. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what's going on, guys? Lockout men back again for another podcast for you guys. Welcome back to the Lockout Men Podcast Show. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and we're back once again with another podcast. But this is just a follow-up interview, you know what I'm saying? My guy, I want to bring to the stage. Uh, hold on right quick. I want to bring to the stage right quick. My man, Michael Henderson, to the show. Now, look, man. I got Michael Henderson from the, from the messenger. This man reached out to me. A while back, I, we, we we this is like back during the JNR days. Uh, he reached out to me like mm. last like last year. Well, no, that wasn't during the JNR days, my fault. But he was asking me about JNR because he was to go to an orientation on that Monday. So, Mike, man, what you here? You now? What's your status? Where where, where are you at? You with J and R Sugar Man or what? No, I am not with J and R Sugar. Mm. Hell no. Mm. That man said <laughs> I'm actually no. with Western Express. Okay, Western Express. I'm with Western Express. Okay, so let's back up a little bit, man. Uh, let's back up a little bit. When you when you was going to orient, well, when you was going to orientation. Was you coming straight out of school or you was coming from a different company? What was your status back then? I was actually coming from Celadon a week before they shut down. Okay. And I drove from Indianapolis to New Ulm, New Elm. New Ulm, Minnesota. Yep. New Ulm. Yep. In the snow with a Honda Element. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So let's okay. So let's go a little bit further back then. All right. So, uh, Celadon, man. Whoops. Uh, okay. So how how long you worked with Celadon, and what happened when when you guys got the notice that they was that they was uh going out of business? I should say. I noticed that the uh, lease department they started to shut down. I was actually getting out of orientation. And uh, there was like a couple of old gentlemen, they was walking around, they was kind of congregating, and uh, they was, I was, I was coming around just kind of handling my own business, and I just kind of heard somebody say, hey, there's nobody in the lease department office. Mm -hmm. What the hell is going on, you know? Mm -hmm. And the people in the office kind of got blue pale in the face, and I just kind of, you know, Knowing me, I'm kind of intuitive. I'll be watching my surroundings and what's going on. Right, right. So I'm always all over the place. And rumor at that moment, hot off the press, you know, they let the two lease department people go. Mm. So me, I'm always kind of, you know, uh, paranoid and, you know, conspiracy theorist that I am. First thing that came to my head was, hey, there's already a rumor they're bankrupt. So if they let the lease department go, there's a lot of truckers out here that's leasing trucks that might be SOL. Okay. So, you know, just kind of flew in a little bit more, come to find out the leasing department shut down. So were, were you a lease were you a lease driver at the time or you were, you was a company driver at the time? I was a company driver at the time. Okay, okay. And then you just heard you kinda of like heard through the grapevine that the that the lease department was 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 uh was shutting down. And then after yeah. after the lease department pretty much shut down, everything else just just trickled down down to, to you guys. Like a company. domino effect. Yeah, to your company guys. So you so you're out driving, um, you did you get notice on the Qualcomm or 
what how did you get noticed to bring the truck back or what was told to you to you know to to get stuff back to where you where you were back get stuff back shit my notice was pretty much watching TV. Uh, a week after that, it was all over the you know United States news that those guys was getting uh, indicted, and that was pretty much my clue to start you know hunting down another company. Okay, okay. you know three guys getting indicted on some lease purchase charges, you know, mm-hmm. and upselling things. That you know when it goes federal, everything shuts down pretty fast. Lockdown. Okay. Okay. You no, know, Uncle Sam's gonna come collect. So did so did you did did you re, did you receive a call from from the company themselves or anything like that or or I pretty much I was doing Cato runs uh the good thing about Celadon you know especially during that time the OTR was horrible they paid decent but we didn't none of us got our sign on bonus uh there was a lot of there was a lot of things going on, but at the same time as the legal issues was going on and probably some sand dangling behind the scenes, there was actually, you know, Celadon was probably one of the best companies I worked for. Um, I had some friends that worked in the office tell me, hey, you know, why are you wasting time with OTR when we got all these Cato runs that need to be ran? So why don't you do that? You'll make the same kind of money. And you can chill around Indianapolis and the dorms because, you know, Celadon had the dorms. And, uh, you know, we just partied hardy, man. You know, I do those Cato runs, be back every day, and just party. You know, it was it was actually fun for me. Okay, okay. So the, the last the last hurrah man did uh were were you able to get the were you were you was one of the ones that was able to get the truck back in time so that you wasn't you wasn't left stranded out there funny thing about that situation i actually jumped ship before it crashed landed mm-hmm. and um lo and behold if i had to stay that extra week and got stranded I think I'm pretty sure a lot of truckers that worked with Celadon or was close with truckers that worked at Celadon, I'm pretty sure they would notice that there was a lot of companies at the time only had, you know, barely three months experience. And, you know, there was a lot of bigger companies, some companies that I was wishing to get on with. They was pretty much saying, Hey, you got stuck and stranded at Celadon. Come over. We'll give you guys the, you know, the red carpet. Come on. Right, and right, right. And it was, it even was though I was of... being intuitive, mm-hmm. even though I was being intuitive, I kind of wish I'd stayed, even though who who wants to be stranded, but I kind of wish I'd stayed so I got on with better company. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because, right. Because, <laughs> you know, a lot of the, a lot of the companies uh, uh, that reached out to, you know, to the Celadon, to the Celadon guys, uh, they they offered them some, you know, like you said, they gave them the red carpet treatment. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a bigger sign, right. a bigger sign on bonus, uh, uh, incentive uh, to help you move uh, and stuff like that. So unfortunately for you, you 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 didn't go with them, but you decided from there, you decided to go to J and R Schwugel. So what was your experience? What was your whole experience with J&R Schwogel? Oh, Lord have mercy. Talk about Cutthroat. Mm. That company. I actually asked him about you. I asked the uh, safety guy who was a, I think he was an ex-cop or something like that. Big guy, but I remember, big guy named Don. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, Don uh Don is like shrimp. He he's he's an inquired taste, bro. He 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 really is. Acquired taste. I actually like shrimp. 
<laughs> you might have to rephrase that one. I had to rephrase that one. <laughs> you gonna you gonna make me hate shrimp now, man? <laughs> oh shit! I let it out the bag. Oh man! But nah, nah, man, I ain't a hater, man. I ain't a hater. So I'll just, I'll, I'll just, I'll keep this clean and cut. Yeah, keep it one hundred, man. Keep it. Then on Shugo, I got, I got me and five other people got our heads chopped off day two of orientation. No explanation, no nothing. The funny thing was, I got a call in the hotel. I was actually packing up to leave. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. I was packing up to leave, and I was going to call them to let them know, hey, you know, where's my check for orientation? Because this is a long drive. Right. I'm one of those type of dudes when it comes to my money. Hey, I don't trust anybody. Hand me my, hand me my money. I did what I had to do. I came. I saw, okay, y'all asked me. Give me, give me my pay up to that point, okay. and we can, we can go separate ways. For like ten minutes before I was actually ready to call them, they called me and said, "Hey, we, we just feel like this. You won't be a good fit here. We got to part ways." And I was like, "Well, you know what? Y'all, y'all almost beat me to. Well, you did beat me to the punch. I was going to call y'all. And say y'all just give me my money so I can go on and go." Oh, One up. of the reasons. Up, that, wait, 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 wait. They. They they Fridayed you, man. They 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 called you while you were still at the hotel. Like it wasn't going to work out, man. Like what the hell, bro? Yes, sir. Me and then when I got back, five other people said the same thing. Like, hey, you know. And then I also kind of realized, Don, you know, when you're in orientation in the in the office building, you kind of hear things is going on. You know, you see what's going on. You see how the office how they do their thing. Mm-hmm. You're just sitting in there kind of like shaking in your boots like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, let me see if I can. But I'm very intuitive. I saw there was a lot of things that if I was a driver working for them, I would be on toes, on edge. You know, I yeah. feel like I'm in a jail cell, yeah. you know, it's, making money. It's unfortunate. So this is trucking. It's, Everything fluctuates. It's, it's unfortunate that you had to feel that 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 you had to feel that way. I mean, you wasn't the only one that um, that came in. Now, when I was still with JNR Swoogle, I was the one, you know, you could call me the yeah. ambassador. You know what I'm saying? I was the one that was bringing right. in, like, majority of the people that was coming in. But I did get phone calls from like some of the people like yo lock out man no nah, this ain't for me uh you know this <laughs> this ain't for me man and and like the one girl her name was Z she came in and her her orientation didn't go all that well and she called me up she was like lock out man I love you and everything but no nah, this company is not for me man so like I said and, and oh, as man, I dude. said before hold on as, basically as said, that's us giving you respect <laughs> right right and I appreciate all of them doing that because like I said when I was doing my videos about the company I will always tell you guys up front no sugar coating no bullshit it's all yeah. about your experience not mine because mine was pretty good I mean my my experience to the very end, was pretty good. You know what I'm saying? But your this is your experience. That's why I let you guys know up front, like, yo, if y'all don't want to fuck with this company, man, don't come back on and say, yo, lockout, you know, lied and everything. No, I ain't lied about nothing. No, 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 <laughs> nah, man. I got mad respect for you. For you to be able to sit there and deal with that. And, and I also know you was home every weekend, right? Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to interview you. But I'm just refreshed. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You right. I got home. You you I I I could get home every weekend. Now I didn't go home every weekend, but I can get home every weekend. Uh weekend. Weekend. You know what I'm saying? I look. Just a quick shout out. Shout out to shout out man. Mm-hmm. Yo, and y'all don't understand. for all y'all people that's thinking about Dan R. Shrugal, when you get there, y'all gonna respect this guy. Cause I don't see how you did it. I really don't. I appreciate. I really you. don't. I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much. But man, respect to you, though. I appreciate it. All right. So what? So orientation got the call. Uh, what, what happened from there? Basically, I took my butt home. I felt like you know this, this was a whirlwind for me. It was mind you. Time. Before all of this, I was with Western for about a month doing training. Uh, flatbed, mm-hmm. which is actually what I'm doing now. Okay, but the 
But to rewind back to that point, I went home. I drove from New Home in the snow in my little queue back to Kansas. I was living at Kansas with my mom's at the time. I just got my CDL. So I'm trying to, you know, get the tracks in and go, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think the next company after that, this my part's probably going to be embarrassing to most truckers. I, hey, I'm a humble person. I'm just going to keep it one. And I went to a company out of Sheldon, Iowa, named Van White. They're a reefer yeah, company. I'm familiar with them. I'm familiar. I with them. believe about two weeks later. Okay. Well, what was the uh, what was what was what was the thing with them? Hold up! Before you even go, I wait, 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 wait! Before you even go into them, I, I want to rewind back to J and R's rule for for just a hot, hot, hot minute. A hot minute. All right. Um. Uh, I'm still tripping on the fact that they they every everything everything that 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 you talked to the recruiter about who who was your recruiter? Oh, I can't even remember. Uh, it was a very nice lady. She was working for home, and uh, but she controlled the sector where I was getting recruited out of. Okay, she was cool. She got she did give me my pay. For driving up there, uh-huh. using my own personal gas. She, the recruiting process of it was spectacular. Okay, okay. It was just when it was orientation. Okay, so you, so I want to say something so bad, but I want to no, keep it go, professional. No, 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 no. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> this is your form. This is it. Yo, let it out, man. Let oh, it God. out, bro. What I want to know is, Brothers you do got, not go to JNR school. <laughs> you got to orientation. You got to orientation. What was the what was their reason of letting you go? What happened that way? They did not give me a reason. Oh, you know what? I even left out the part that Don, when I was getting my check, the guy, I I think I remember his name. His last name was Shugel. He was part of the family. Okay. But he ran the uh, orientation part. Okay. Young guy, skinny. Okay. I forgot his name. Maybe if you say his name, I might be able to remember. I can't remember. I, his I, last name was Shugel. Okay, I know there's a couple of Shugels there, but I I, I only knew the chick. Uh, she was in safety. Shout out to the guy back when I was in there. His last name was Shugel. He was part of the family, but they had him doing the orientation part. Okay. He was the reason why I got my check, because Don was like, no, don't give him nothing. But the the guy with the family name, he actually went, and I actually heard him tell Don, nah, man, he deserves his check because he came up here and handled his part. Right. You just didn't want him. So we're going to do our end of the bargain. Um, why, you know? why he didn't want you, though? Like, what did you give him any any inclination nah, of, man, of not wanting to fuck with I was with actually you? intimidated of that guy. I was actually intimidated by the guy. I'm the quiet mouth, man. Everybody. When I'm in a place of work. Mm-hmm. I'm quiet, but that guy, honestly, I was intimidated so much that when I got back to the hotel, I, I mean, when I woke up that morning, I was actually saying to myself, man, let me just go and take my butt home. This ain't going to work. I feel like I ain't got no freedom with this company. I feel like they over micromanage. Yeah, yeah. He's a stickler for all the, I mean, don't get it twisted. I'm a very safe driver. I have nothing on my record mm-hmm. as far as unsafe driving. No tickets. I've been DOT three times past every one of them. Mm-hmm. Man, I just, but with but with him, I just felt like every 15 minutes, he's going to call you about something petty. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why I say, yo, brothers, if you're just embarking on your way, I would skip JNR shoes. I think for the guys like you that mastered their craft, I think it's still a nail biter for y'all. But I think y'all have learned how to, y'all, I'm talking about the higher up guys like you, Guys has got like four or five years experience. Mm-hmm. I even think even for y'all, it's a nail biter. I think you can vouch for that. I'm pretty yep. sure whoever's been there, you know, I've talked to quite a few guys that, that used to drive for JNR and they, and they can see they, my face. They would and they're all like, yeah, you man, you're right, man. Yeah, they, they would all, they would all yeah. concur. They will concur with you on, on, uh, if you happen to mention the man's name. I mean, he is very intimidating. Like I said, no. Like I, you know, like I say, no, sh- no, no, no shots fired to you, Don, man. I mean, you know, obviously, yeah. obviously you've been there with the company for a long time and obviously you must be doing something right. But 
Yeah, I mean, you know, at at the at at the end of it all, you know what I'm saying. My my main reason was, uh, my main reason was because of the uh, the fleet manager that I had. But yeah, me and Don at the end of it, we we started not seeing eye to eye on a lot of things and. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, told me he told me he didn't like you doing the video things in the in the video, and I I took your defense. I was like, "Yo, what's wrong with him having videos in this uh, truck?" Oh, well, you know, it takes it takes uh, it takes his eyes off the road. He's not concentrating on the road. But you know what? This man been driving for five years. He ain't re- yet. He ain't did nothing. Hold on, let me knock on wood right quick. Mm-hmm. Thank you. But still, you know what 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 does that have to do with you? You know, you're babysitting drivers that don't really need to be babysitted. Babysit the drivers that need to be babysitted. Like, I'm, I'm a firm believer in an eye for an eye or, you know, be just fair. You know, if, if, if somebody's screwing up and it's obvious that that guy's screwing up, babysit him, coach him. You know, put the cameras in the truck. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, my vision is when it comes to video and safety in the truck, Safety should always come first. If you t- if, this is, if this is your bread and butter, you should be a safe driver regardless of whatever situation you're going through. You should be able to automatically train yourself. But to some companies that think, oh, we want to put the driver camera, we want to put this feature, we want to put that feature, we want to put this feature because it's never too much, then you know what? It, too much of something can be a hindrance or a you know, a tedious situation that's already destructive or already stressful for somebody. You know, that would if I was a new driver getting out of school and I saw all that stuff in the truck and then a guy like that, that would that would probably make me reconsider <laughs> what the hell am I doing? Okay. Because anything can happen. Okay. So you he, know, I think it's to be ingrained in the person. So he so 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 Don mentioned my name. Oh, okay. He didn't like me though. Well, I'm missing you. I'm missing your name. Mm-hmm. He grimaced. But hey, I'm gonna get it to you cut and dry. But I, I didn't like the guy from the jump, and I thought that was a pretty piss for, you know, excuse for, you know, trying to add in. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought it was piss poor. You love what you do, do what you love, man. That that's what my mom and dad always told. I, Don't let nobody stop. I appreciate that. All right, so let's move on, man. J and R Swoogle in the past in the in the in the back window. You know what I'm saying? Whew. In the back window. Uh you, yeah. you moved on. So where where are you at now, bro? Uh where where are you at now? Um, right now I am at Western Express, believe it or not. Now before you before you talk about your experience with Western Western, are you a felon? No. Nah. Okay, because Western Express is considered one of those trucking comp one of those second chance trucking companies for uh for felons. But all right, go ahead. So uh earlier er, earlier today, you know, you kind of text me, you know, it sounds it felt like you, you know, you was kind of upset because, you know, of of the BS that was going on. So get it off your chest, bro. Yeah. Long story short, you know, you're right. I, I come to find out that this is a, a second chance company. And I just to just to kind of give people the realest and just straight humble of my situation to try to bring it full circle. I screwed up. I'm not a felon, but I screwed up because I've been with, I guess you could say, six different companies within a year. Okay. Okay. Now, Coming out of coming out of uh, CDL school down in Lakeland, Florida. Shout out to Career Tech in Lakeland, Florida. Kick ass school, fun times, met some cool people, still friends to this day. Okay. Um, I got out. I didn't realize, you know. Okay, you're getting all this knowledge about the truck. Now you need to get knowledge on these companies and how they work. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm always one of those guys. I like the Shaka Khan song. It's through the fire. Before you, you know, before you see. Mm-hmm. So I didn't realize until maybe the third, fourth company on this journey, yo, this is piling up. I'm starting to get grid locked out of companies, mm-hmm. you know, that I should be easily getting on. And they even told me themselves, yeah, your director's clean, but this is what we're nailing you on. Right. So for all you young suckers, 
don't flip companies when you get out of CDL school. Take the time, and I repeat, take the time to get knowledge on companies. Talk to truck drivers. Don't believe what the recruiters tell you unless you sign in a contract on it. Talk to your trainee trainers. So half y'all, well, most every one of y'all is going to come out of CDL school going with a trainer. So talk to your trainers. They're going to let you know the raw deal. Talk to truck drivers. Go to truck, even if you got to get in your car and, and oh, you know, uh, hell, I'm looking at a Trans Am and a Prime truck right now. Mm-hmm. If you thinking about going to Trans Am or Prime, talk to one of those truck drivers. Don't be like me and go through the fire about three, four times before you realize, oh, this is catching up. So now you might as well just label me one because, hell, my work history is all screwed up, even though there's a lot of, I've noticed on my deck, there's not really anything they've reported bad. Mm -hmm. It's just, hey, you know, it is what it is. You got to answer for that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so I think I can take my notion and, Pass that down. Please do your research on these damn companies because they all out to do the same thing: take money out of the driver, make make y'all lives a living hell. That's what you grow on. If you can get through it, you can get through it. There's definitely a reward out of this. There is. That's one to grow on, man. That's what's up. That is what's up. All right, so yeah, yeah I'm living it. I I feel the fact that um. I feel the fact that uh, a lot of drivers that comes out of school and they go with a, the first company they go with tends not to be the company that's right for them. Then they jump with another company. Then they jump with another company. And then they jump with another yep. company. Um, yep. Unfortunately, like the the gooder, gooder, is that, an, is that a word? If it is, I'm going to use it. The gooder companies are the ones that's not that the ones that say, hey, uh, look, man, you've been to like four, five, six, seven, eight companies in a year, man. This this telling me that that you 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 you're not gonna work out with us. So I've been saying that for the longest. Like if you get with a company and let's just say it doesn't work out for you, try to make it work out for you. At least get the experience because that's what it's gonna be about in the first place anyway. If you jumping in these companies to try to yep. go for the money, then you're not going to be happy. You you you're just not going to be happy because the money's not going to. That's be exactly happy. my frame of mind. Just to bust it down, because I know people are listening to you, but just to bust it down, mm-hmm. just to give it that for real. Mm-hmm. That's the same mindset that I had. I was like, dude, I'm not making money, and mind you, yeah, I, I, I'm not just a tyrant. You know, my checks weren't getting messed up. They were getting messed up at Celadon, but when I went to do the Cato run, it got cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, it uh, it didn't get messed up at Westman, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did get messed up at Celadon. Van White paid me well, but Van White was running me so illegal to where now that I have more knowledge and I'm still gaining knowledge, because there's a lot. There's like five different things I learned about pre-trip in the day that some of it I knew, but the other facts, like like details on your DOT sticker mm-hmm. on any trailer, mm-hmm. you know, most. It, I'm matter of fact, we'll throw it back, throw it to everybody. Check your DOT sticker on your trailer. There's a lot of people. That I, I understand when you get the truck in, you just want to grab that trailer, get booking, get your logo go. I feel everybody on that, but I've seen so many people get busted for them DOT service stickers annually. It, those, or excuse me, those annual annual uh, DOT service stickers. I've seen people get busted, and I've heard those tickets are expensive. Yes, they are. Twenty five hundred dollars. Yes, they are. Just for a ticket. Yes, they are, man. All right. So please check your damn trailers. <laughs> so Western Express, you you uh, how, how many years uh, you got all together uh, in trucking, man? I'm right at a year. You had a year. I'm right. I'm right at a year. With all these companies, I'm probably right at it. I mean, legally, what they can verify through all my mess is probably right at about eight months, eight months. When I should be at a year this month, all right. So, like literally within two weeks. So, what's your what's your plan? What what's, what's your plan for Western Express? You you gonna try and uh, knock it out about another year or so to at least get a couple of years up under your belt before you start uh, looking for better companies? 
pretty much, man, I, I the first move that I made, uh, I was with a trainer for flatbed. I'm doing flatbed now. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish I had a stuff with that. My first move was my best move. And it's funny because my last stand is with this company, and I pretty much have no choice but to stick it out for a solid six months, as close as two years I can get before any of these companies. I got Frey Miller, the recruiter there. He heard my story. He was like, man, I, I want to get him on. But he said, man, my safety said, you know, the insurance. We, we sent, I mean, I had three companies send my, my story in. But the insurance was like, no, he's got to stay with a company for six months. Then we can get him. So it's all hope ain't lost. It's all on this flatbed that I'm standing on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, pretty much it's like what you said, six months to a year. I'm going to try to see if I can get as close to a year. It's not going to be easy. There's all, I mean, one thing about Western, instead of talking about the cons, I think everybody knows about the cons. Yeah, that's, that's everybody know about the, the cons. Yeah, everybody know about the cons with uh, Western Express. Uh, try try to give some people some awesome pros. Give, give give some of the pros, man. Before we get on up out of here, give 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 some of the pros of uh what Western Express can offer. One thing I can say about Western, and this is this is more of my philosophy, brothers, sisters, if y'all come out here, and also other people that you know want to be in a very diverse co- uh, company. And, you know, want the lead way, you want the freedom. I will admit, Western Express, you get a lot of freedom. You know, if you're not under a load and you tell your dispatch manager, hey, I'm fatigued, I'm tired, I don't feel like running right now, my hours have been crazy, just give me a day to where I can chill, you, they'll let you do that. They won't trip. It's just as long as the next day you're ready to roll. Um, that's one good time. You got freedom. The second, flat bedding for people that are hyper, you know, and you want to you wanna lose weight, keep your, keep your health good. Western actually pays good. You know, they do cap off at the miles sometimes, but I think some of the drivers is getting capped is because, you know, they get good DMs and they don't know how to respect them. So I think that's kind of like a punishment of, yeah, we're going to run you, but we're going to cap you. So you're not going to be happy. But me, me and my DM's cool. I've had trailer problems all the way to the fleet manager called me. It was like, man, we apologize. We're glad that you're doing your pre-trip. Matter of fact, we encouraged that. Gave me a hundred dollar bonus on my check just for, just for doing something that you're supposed to do. And so, you know, if you carry yourself well and take the lead and apply yourself, use your two feet, um, Weston does have all the tools you need to get it done. Um, that's a that's a second that's a second pro. A third pro, they have newer trucks. Um, I'm I'm in a freight line of Cascadia 2020. It's nice. Uh, you have all the tools you need. The trucks are good. Um, granted, the maintenance department is kind of sluggish. You know, you'll be sitting for for days on end. You know, depending on how severe the matter. But uh, Western, you know, the, on the flatbed division, they pay decent. And the per diem that you get offsets everything. It, 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 I guess it's safe to say you can make between, it's going to fluctuate, but you can make between 700 and and $1,000. I've, I've seen it. There's a lot of drivers, you know, that some guys, they, they swap their paychecks. I'm not really into that. But I've, I've seen with my own eyes and heard and saw too that there is confirmation that Western on the flatbed side. I'm not speaking for the drive in. I'm not even going to go there with that. I would not recommend nobody do drive in at Western. But if you're going to come to Western and you in a situation like me or you're a felon or this is maybe the only company you can go to, get on the flatbed side, make some of yourself. And it's safe to say, I, I, I know for a fact I can make my last stand here. It ain't going to be pretty. I probably won't be the richest man. But considering what I went through, West is probably the better companies. And I've been through four, five, six, somewhere around there. But you got your freedom. I like my freedom. As long as I work, I know 
or at least have a good judge of what my paycheck's going to be. So at the same time, there's a lot of bad about Western. There's actually a lot of good about this place too. You know, it's not all it's, it's not all bad as what people make it seem. It's actually pretty decent. That's just decent. That's what's up, man. That is what's up. That is what's up. Well, my man Michael Henderson, man, for sure, man. Thanks for coming on. You know what I'm saying? Doing the follow up with me right quick, letting people know where you at, letting people letting some gems out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, what, what what kind of tips you got for these new jacks? Now you only been in it for a year, but what kind of what kind of tips that you got for these new jacks out here, man? Take care of yourself. Keep some water on deck. Keep you a good taste of water. You know, try to be good to your uh, dispatch manager. You know, keep it short and sweet. Stay on your lows. Stay on time. And mentally and physically prepare yourself for all the safety yeah. management tips that you get. Pay attention to safety. And just do your job and, and take pride in it that's, and, and, and be patient. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. My man, Michael Henderson, I appreciate you. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you know what I'm saying? Share your experience and all that good stuff. Don't forget to, you know, hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or head over to Instagram and get at me over there. Or text me, 216 216- Six zero zero two zero nine zero, man. That's what's up. I want to thank my special guest, Mike Henderson, for staying on the show. This is I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and this is the Lockout Men podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's going to play me out, so why they playing me out? I'm just going to say thank you for because watching. Thank you for listening. I, I appreciate you guys. And on that note, y'all take it easy, and I'll be back at you in another video. Peace.